What's going on, nation? Before we head to the gym and tear up biceps and triceps, I wanted to share with you my results. And I'm going to look into the phone while I film this because I noticed that if I don't, I tend to swing the phone all over the place. So I know it's weird, but I'm looking at you, looking at me, looking at you. So that's, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> so I just weighed myself in. I'm at 177 pounds. I haven't really been 177 pounds for a while. And why? Well, the last time I was 177 pounds, I was kind of fatty throughout my core. I tend to hold my body fat first on the sides of my obliques right here. And since I've been really dialing my meal plan and focusing on my cardio, you guys can see now, even when I flex, I'm able to get nice and tight, do a side pose, everything's getting nice and tight, obliques are nice and shredded, abs are looking good, everything's really starting to pull together. And I feel like now, especially because my meal plan's been on point, I've been really watching my carbs, I've been you know, making sure I get all my protein every day, I've been doing my cardio two to three times a week, I've been consistently deadlifting two to three times a week, focusing on deficits, rack pulls, and traditional deadlifts. You guys know I'm trying to increase my max to 550 this year. All of these things together have just felt awesome. This is the best I've felt in a long time, and I'm pretty pumped about it. So I hope you guys have been training hard. And if you have any questions about your routine, obviously you can leave a comment in the comment section below. But now we're going to head over to the gym and we're going to train biceps and triceps. We're going to start this workout out with a warm-up, doing a warm-up dumbbell curl, two sets of eight repetitions per side. Really simple here, guys. I am doing some supinating, so I'm going to twist my palm in at the top of the movement, focusing on that full range of motion, uh, just getting the muscles warmed up. I've actually started my workouts recently wearing my sweatshirt and just getting my body to warm up, especially with it being so cold up here on the East Coast. And I've actually found that it gets me into my workouts quicker. I feel better. I feel a little stronger. Usually if I go in and it's, it's kind of cold in the gym and it takes a lot longer for my body to warm up, I feel like I don't get the most out of my lifts. So quick warm up. If you got a sweatshirt and it's cold, keep it on. It does help. And just like I said, do eight repetitions all the way up, all the way down each side. Warm up those biceps. The first exercise you're going to do is a dumbbell bicep curl. And you're doing four sets of ten repetitions. And so obviously, guys, ten reps per side or per arm. As you can see, I'm not doing any swinging whatsoever. I'm relying solely on my own power in my arm to bring that dumbbell up and then I'm controlling it on the way down. Fully extending at the bottom of the movement. You, can, you know it's a full extension because if you do a full extension, you'll actually flex your tricep. And you can see all that engagement. You guys have to remember the reason why most people don't do full extensions on bicep curls isn't because it keeps tension in the muscle, it's because it's easier. And I don't understand why you want to go to the gym to make something easy. The point is to get stronger overall, and any range of motion that you don't train in, you will always be weak. And so as you guys can see right here, I actually got a bunch of reps with the 55s, and then I dropped it down to 50 to finish off the set. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. I want you guys to push yourselves. Maybe if I had a spotter, they could have helped me get those last few reps with the 55s. But unfortunately, when you're filming a set and your spotter has the camera, you know, you don't exactly have that luxury, <laughs> which can be a problem a lot of times. So, but as you can see, getting nice and vascular all the way up, all the way down, really flexing and squeezing. You'll notice sometimes I do lean back a little bit. That's actually a way you can kind of self-spot as you're doing the exercise. Just make sure you're always controlling that negative on the way down. Moving on, we're going to be doing single arm preacher curls. Four sets, ten reps per side. This is actually an exercise that I haven't tossed into a bicep workout in a long time. And it felt really good. I feel like this exercise, because your arm is isolated like this you really have to focus on squeezing as hard as you can to get that full extension and bring the weight all the way up and all the way down with each repetition now obviously guys once again i'm fully extending on this exercise it's kind of funny because i see a lot of people do this movement and they barely do any range of motion whatsoever the hardest part of this exercise is that last like inch or inch and a half at the bottom of the movement 
where you kind of disengage and have to re-engage your bicep. It takes so much more power, you have to activate so much more muscle fiber to really push through that sticking point that I don't understand why you would want to skip out on that because you're going to make a lot more gains when you're doing full range of motion. And as you can see, you know, how you stand and position is really important here as well. You want to make sure the seat is at the right height so that you can stick your armpit right into the top of that pad. And also, you don't want to be hunched over. You don't want to have your shoulders rolled over while doing this exercise, even if you're doing it um, with a straight bar. You always want to make sure your shoulder blades are back and you have a nice solid stance. The more solid your stance is, the more you can keep your core nice and tight and keep everything in your upper body nice and tight the more you can focus on generating as much power as possible into that single arm with every single rep. Shake it up. A quick note for you guys, if your single arm preacher curl looks like this, you only go on about here, and then going all the way up, anybody can do this. It doesn't require much effort. You're not lifting 60 pounds. You're not really doing anything. So do full range of motion or don't do it at all. The next exercise is the reverse barbell curl. Again, four sets, 10 repetitions. And remember, you're only taking about a 60 second break in between all the sets and all the exercises. 60 seconds, Nation, that's one minute, and it's a lot shorter of a rest period if you really pay attention to the clock. The whole point of this workout is to work on volume. And so you can add more volume into your workout a few different ways, two of which those ways are being done here. More sets with you know a medium amount of reps, so 10 repetitions, and then also by shortening the rest period. By only having a one minute rest period, there's not much time between sets, so it's like you're actually adding more volume to the workout because the muscles are fatigued throughout the entire set, especially after you finish the first exercise. Now, as you guys can see here, um, I wasn't able to get all 10 repetitions. And so all you got to do is put the weight down, lower the weight a little bit, pick it back up, and then finish the reps. And I actually ended up doing 12 repetitions here because when I dropped the 10 pounds off each side, it actually got a little too light. So what happens is, instead of ruining those repetitions, if it happens to be a little bit too light when you do your drop, Really focus on squeezing the bar as hard as you can. Focus on squeezing your bicep as hard as you can. And maybe even slow the tempo on the way up and on the way down. Try to go a little slower. And make sure you push to those sticking points. I was fried at 11, but I don't like ending on an odd number. <laughs> the last exercise is more of a, a finisher movement for the biceps. It's a dumbbell drag curl. You're doing four sets of 12 repetitions. Again, a 60 second break in between each set. At this point in the workout, you're gonna be pretty pumped from doing all those other exercises. So your range of motion might vary depending on how bulky of a, of a frame you have. For me, if I didn't have a pump, I could probably get the dumbbells up a little higher, a little closer to my shoulders. But as you can see, I'm struggling really hard here trying to get the dumbbells as close to my armpits as possible. And that's what we're going for. The whole point of this is to get that pump, get that nice squeeze, and give those biceps that final attack that they need in order to break down as much muscle tissue as possible so that they grow. Now moving on to triceps, guys. Close grip bench press, four sets, 10 reps per set. Now you're going to notice a few things here when I do my close grip bench press. Number one, my hands aren't super close together. That's not proper form. Proper form on this exercise is you want to put your hands close enough together so that you can keep your arms by your side on the way up and on the way down. You'll also notice that I'm benching between my, the bottom of my chest and my belly button. You have to imagine if you were to do a dip, the position your arms would be in. It's the same position that you want to have your arms when doing the close grip bench press. Obviously, your palms are facing down instead of in, but it's the same thing, guys. Squeeze out all of those reps. The next exercise is one of my favorite tricep exercises, the standing dumbbell overhead extension. Four sets, 10 repetitions. 
On this exercise, make sure you really focus on keeping your core nice and tight and flex your glutes as hard as you can. That's going to help you be more stable as you're standing up. Make sure you bring the weight all the way down and fully extend at the top of each movement. And what I like to try to do too is keep my wrist straight as I get towards the top of the movement as well. Next exercise, V-bar push down, four sets, 10 repetitions. By this point in the workout, you guys should be feeling super fatigued and a lot of volume, but that's what we're going for. I want you guys to be sore tomorrow. With this exercise, it's really important to try to keep your shoulder blades back. And as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty tired right here and I'm starting to roll my shoulders forward a little bit as I do the extensions. I'm trying to reset myself as much as possible. But when you only have two reps left, you just gotta push through and fight it and then adjust your form in the next set. Last exercise, just like biceps, we're doing more of a, of a finisher for the triceps. So tricep kickback, four sets, 15 reps per side. The goal here is to keep your elbow as high as you can as you do the kickback. You want to basically hit that 90 degree angle when you're in the down position and have it so that your arm is parallel to the floor when fully extended. Now I've actually found that it's more enjoyable for me to do this exercise when I can actually wrap my hand that I'm posting with around a bar. So I'm sure a lot of you guys do this exercise on a bench and you have your hand kind of flat and one knee up. I like doing them standing. For whatever reason, I feel a lot more stable and I can control the weight better. And then if I, if I wasn't as fatigued as I am now, I could go even a little heavier with that dumbbell. But remember, the goal here is to work with proper form, hit as much volume as possible, and really focus on those negatives as well to break down that muscle fiber and grow. Three more sets of that, and complete your bicep and tricep workout. Hope you guys enjoyed the routine. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for more great tips, exercise routines, and meal plans. Be sure to join us on MuscularStrength.com. What's your maximum output?